This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Accelerate your career with IT Pro and ACI Learning. Test your new skills in practice labs with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Use the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off a standard or premium IT Pro membership. Check out go.acilearning.com slash TWIT to learn more. Marco, are you going to buy a 15-inch MacBook Air M2 when that comes out, if it comes out? I think I'll be one of the only people in the world who doesn't buy it. But man, I like I hope they release it just because so many people want that machine. You know, the 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 MacBook Air, it it's such a good computer now. I mean, it's always been pretty good, but now it's like there there's almost no downside for almost any workload to be done on a MacBook Air. It's it is the default computer for everyone, and it should be. And the one big thing holding it back for a lot of people was I want something a little bit bigger. I want a little bit more screen space or whatever. And and, you know, until now, well, until this comes out, um, you know, you had to just jump to something that costs twice as much money. And, uh, you know, to have to have another option here that, you know, takes just the same specs of the MacBook Air and just adds a bigger screen and changes basically nothing else and doesn't incur all the cost of all the higher end parts that are in the MacBook Pros. Uh, that, I think, is going to be a blockbuster. I think it's really true that from almost, I would say, 99 percent of people using Macs, you, you don't need a pro that the MacBook Air is kind of amazingly performant. I have the M2 MacBook Air and I still want the 15 inch. I, still, I won't buy it, but it's tempting. Andy, are you tempted? Wanna, you know what? I, I keep coming. I keep coming closer around to it. The only uh, uh, I think that the only limiting thing for the MacBook Air for me is that I do. I can't afford to have lots and lots of different Macs. And so right. uh, whatever, whatever laptop I get is probably going to do double duty on my desktop. And I really like the idea of being able to have more than one external display. But really, when you consider that that's the only limitation of a device that used to be the MacBook of eternal compromise, you only get 64 gigs of storage. You only get one USB port. The battery is not that great. Uh, all uh, the, the keyboard is not going to be as good as what you get on a regular MacBook, but people were screaming for it anyway. Just the idea of having something that is not quite so thick and heavy and, uh, and bulky that gets all the, that ticks all the boxes. I mean, I, I think Marco is absolutely right. I mean, if, 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 uh, if it were important to reorganize by logic, the, the names of products in the, in the Mac line, I think that the MacBook Air should become the MacBook uh, to free up the, the term MacBook Air for something that has the original cachet, something that, okay, it only has one USB-C port. However, it is no thicker than uh, an iPad Pro with the smart keyboard attached to it. Uh, and it's not as powerful, but if you want something for $1,000 that you basically won't even think about leaving at home, there is your deal for you. Alex, you were going to say something. I'm cut you off. Oh, I just, I'm, I'm really looking forward to something larger. It could, it could bring me back around. I have to admit that I have a 14 inch MacBook Pro um, and I dislike the size so much. I realized I've almost stopped using a laptop. Really? <laughs> too, too, <laughs> small? Know, like I, too small? I got it because you? it was be more portable. Yeah. I just find it so painful. Like it's just, it's just so, I just get angry all the time. Oh, I love when my I'm 14 using inch. It. If I hadn't <laughs> poured like, coffee into it, computer. I'd still be using oh, it. I, I'm I thinking it. now, we saw the uh, story this week that Apple has apparently bought up all of TSMC's three nanometer process <laughs> nodes, yeah. every single chip, every one of them, uh, which isn't as much as you might, that might, in, you know, imply, oh my God, they're going to make a lot of M3 la laptops or desktops, but, but they only, uh, right now, at least according to, uh, uh, the rumor are making 45,000 units, uh, in March. So 45,000 times 12, is not a lot. It's not but as many. That's, that's got to be about the iPhone, right? Like, cause, yeah, you know, it's they, not they, even all the started... iPhones. I mean, it means you won't. The iPhone 15 will probably have two chips, right? An M2 and an M3, if they or A15 and A16 or whatever they call it. Yeah, because yeah, you know, they, like they started months. this pattern, you know, last year of having the the you know quote consumer level iPhone and then the Pro and actually have different chips for the first time, uh, and so this gives them. I, I think part of the reason they might have done that was to prepare for this fall when the Pro phone presumably has a three nanometer chip, but they probably don't have enough production capacity to make every iPhone of the year use that process node. So that my guess is that's what this is for, that, that you know, they're gonna have three nanometer for the Pro phones. They might even push the price a little bit higher to 
encourage you know not, not only reap a lot of profit because that usually works for them but also then to encourage more people to pick the consumer one who were kind of on the fence now that the sizes match up there's you know there's not a lot of reason for many people to jump to the pro although people keep doing it anyway <laughs> so and look i'm guilty of this as well uh, i don't i don't really need the pro but i like the pro so i get the pro <laughs> i would I'm, honestly and, uh, yeah i would i mean if, if the only thing keeping me from buying a 15 inch is the idea of getting an a uh, an M3 with an OLED screen uh, is pretty tempting. That, but you're, you're sounds like you're saying don't expect that anytime soon. They're going to use them all up on the iPhone. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some Macs that have you know something called an M3 that has three nanometer process, um, presumably. But I don't know when. You know, the M2s just came out. Uh, the M2, you know, the M2 Pro and Max just came out. We still don't have an M2 Ultra. We we don't even know if we're going to have an M2 Ultra. Um, and then the M3 timeline is still a mystery. But I, I think we, if they follow the same timeline they've been doing for, you know, for the M series so far, then we shouldn't expect the very first M3 products until at least this fall and possibly later. Yeah. Uh, and that would be, that wouldn't be the high end ones. That would be, you know, the regular M3. Um, and, but that, that it, it might not be this fall. Maybe they have. To, maybe they need to save the capacity for iPhones at first. Maybe we won't see M3 uh, M3 Max until the spring or next summer. Who knows? Yeah, uh, you may remember the soap opera around all this. TSMC uh, increased the cost for the uh, three nanometer process chips. Apple balked, but apparently gave in <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> uh, according to Digitimes, again Apple doesn't announce it, uh, but according to Digitimes. They have purchased the entire run of M3 chips. The yields, I'd also heard that the yields were good on the uh, on the three nanometer mo node. But uh, if you compare 45,000 wafers a month in March to what they're doing right now with the previous node, the five nanometer mode, which is 1.3 million a month, that's a big difference. Extreme Tech calls well, it an artisan small batch product. <laughs> well, at the, at the moment, you know, I think that I think the thing is, is that you know, assuming that they would continue at the same pace for a year is probably they unlikely. Faster. They probably, Yields they'll probably up, get, right? you know, once they yeah. once they kind of get the thing running. And I think that it's important. One of the things that Apple's doing really effectively right now is pulling away from everybody else, you know, and both in power consumption as well as power. Um, and so I think that they don't, I don't think they want to lose. I think that the game of chicken that TM, TMC did, um, they won. <laughs> decided to play. They won. Apple blinked. And uh, now they can make as many as they want. with. And, and I'm sure that if they came back to Apple and did that, I'm sure that the cost of production was higher as well. Like, I think that's probably where it was driven from, is that it's probably a lot harder to make these. Because, I mean, when you think about, I don't know, if we step back and look at what three nanometer, three nanometer <laughs> actually means, it's and insane well it doesn't ironically um, actually mean three nanometers among other things but, but no but i mean just three nanometers like, <laughs> like yeah, i'm just saying that it's, it's an inc uh, like the chips of you know the, the, the oh it the is amazing is just, absolutely just amazing truly amazing yeah yeah, yeah yeah it's incredible what they're doing uh in fact I, i'm of the impression and maybe i'm wrong but i think others of the impression that the m2 slash a15 is kind of a because it wasn't a big jump from the M1, right? Is kind of a interim on the way to what it, will be another it, big jump, which is the the three nanometer M3. And chip. it could be a TikTok like they've done another thing, yeah, in other things, other technologies where yeah. you know you may see a you may see the uh, M3 make a big another, a bigger jump, and then the M4 being a lighter jump, and then the M you know like it, it could be. And uh, you're right, Marco. I mean, it's not. I'm not talking this year. Uh, obviously, the iPhone will eat up all of this product. Uh, for. Maybe I mean it, it. It may be that they that these are really put into the desktop, into the computers before they're put into the phone. You I mean, think? Because because just well because you can't get if they don't have the supply in the fall, you know if they don't have enough that they can reasonably put out. Although they could put them out and say, well, you're going to wait for the next six months to get them. <laughs> you know, like that's the other yeah. option is they're only in the pros, and if you don't order them the first day, you'll wait until January to see one, um, which we've seen in the past. So so it's not impossible that they just are they just put them out as fast as they can make them. Yeah, if you can only make half a million chips a year, that is not even close enough. There's, there's a lot of us now that have just gotten into the habit that there's going to be some there's going to be some morning in September that at 5 a.m. we are uh, hammering <laughs> the website to make sure that we we get uh, get something uh, in a reasonable now, amount of time. This, the, the, they say this is wafers. I don't know. You know the way silicon uh, chips are made; they make these larger things and then cut them up. I don't know if that means. It might not mean 45,000 microprocessors. It might mean 45,000 
weight of the big silicon wafers, which can then be chopped up into hundreds or thousands of individual chips. So it really may be many more than half a million a year. I, I'm not sure exactly what they're talking about. But when they say wafers, it sounds like that's the big mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> that's a technical term, you know, the big, <laughs> the big round thing. I have Excellent. one on my Excellent. wall. John, where is it? Do you know where that uh, big wafer is? We should get one. This is an old. This is this is probably a forty-five nanometer in the, process. <laughs> in, in the in the in the teardowns, it'll be interesting to see how much more they keep on moving into the into the chip as well. I mean, so every every iteration, if we've seen stuff that they've talked about in the past, every iteration is going to have less and less external processing. You know, where they're just going to keep yeah. on. It sounds like. I mean, it sounds like there's some trajectory where four or five years from now. There's just a solid chip that gets inserted into the phone and we're like, okay, we're done. Um, you yeah. know, with, without much peripheral, because they talk about legacy, legacy parts. Um, that's kind of a language you use when you're getting rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Just like with, there are a lot of rumors this week about uh, the timetable for uh, Apple's cellular modem. And it's, it'd be nice to have a separate chip for that, just like with use with, with Qualcomm. But you can imagine that their goals are to have one iPhone system on a chip that has everything on one die. Uh, and they're moving that way, aren't they? Huh? Yeah. Oof, so kind of impressive, really. Now, TSMC is in Taiwan. The other big story of the week is Apple. And we've been talking about this for some time, gradually uh, trying to get out of China and uh, and move to other places. Probably not Taiwan. I'm thinking more India, Brazil, Vietnam. <laughs> Did see one story this week that said uh, Vietnam's going to be much more expensive uh, to produce. Here's a story from um, uh, Bloomberg. Apple suppliers are racing to exit China, AirPods maker says. Yeah, it's not just Apple. It's it's all their suppliers. I mean, this is, it's a, it is a serious, serious threat for Apple. It's an existential threat for their suppliers. You know, their, <laughs> their, 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 um, their suppliers are, this is a, a life and death situation if something goes wrong with, if, for, for the companies that are in China right now, if, if, if there's an attack on, on Taiwan, which is what everyone's worried about. And right. I just, I just feel like this is the most, from, from a government perspective, it, it is the most insane thing. I, I mean, Russia going into Ukraine was insane. China talking about Taiwan four years from now is more insane because what it does is it tells every supplier in China, get out of town. And so they're like literally burning their own business, their own industry to the ground. Because no one well, wants to be here in 2027. Yeah, you know, like that's the. I mean, like no one, no one wants to be left there. Because mm -hmm. the, anybody, you know, if, if and and whether they go in or not, the 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 broadcast of it is just, it's absolute insanity. You know, and and so it's and so that all these suppliers are are trying to, you know, diversify as fast as they can. I mean, I don't think anyone wants to be there right now. As an example from the uh, Bloomberg story, AirPods maker Goer Tech. Uh, which today cranks out the bulk of the world's gadgets from iPhones to PlayStations, is investing an additional $280 million in a new Vietnam plant while considering an India expansion. Um, and, of course, Apple's been doing the same thing. TSMC's building a big plant in the U.S. Uh, it won't be a three nanometer plant. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a larger node, but still. Uh, as, I mean, those legacy nodes are just as important. You could build a, you could have a phone that has a beautiful A16 chip in it, but no, nothing else. <laughs> it really isn't a phone in that case. Well, you look at the, in the audio industry, one, one factory burned down in Japan and they're still recovering. Yeah. I mean, so there's some, there's some devices that will never get made again because that, that, you know, the A, AD, A to D processor um, went down and that's, you know, so it, it, you know, it only takes one chip to bring, bring a lot of this stuff back. Hey. 